All right, guys, so the work is finally gonna start here on the S5, and Ryan is all ready to go. We are starting with suspension today, so we have springs, mounts, arms, sway bars, all the goods. So yeah. Goods. Yeah. We're gonna get these wheels off and just start ripping stuff apart and try to blast through this as quickly as possible to get this old girl back on the road by the end of the week. So y'all may be wondering why we're doing a B9 so late in the game. It's a 2019 year model car. It's not like it's anything new. And that is because it is cheaper now. It is a lot more affordable and more affordable to people that would actually be modding these cars. Um, so these cars can be found in the 30s range. It's not a really hard thing to do. This car has 30 or so thousand miles on it. So, so I mean, they can be fairly affordable compared to newer cars. So for the price range, you get a lot for your money. And with not a whole lot, you can make some crazy power numbers and have a still, still have a very functional, dailyable car that's comfortable and nice to drive. Reliable. And reliable, yeah. Obviously, the price fluctuates when you factor in year and package and stuff, but compared to a brand new Golf R or, you know, a GTI for that matter, I mean, they're $40,000 cars in some cases, and that's not. This is a very nice car to drive. It's, I mean, spent two hours in it yesterday. Look at that fucking transmission. <laughs> Ryan really hates that it's not a DSG car. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a nice car. They're comfortable and reliable and quick. With just the stage one tune, this car felt miles different. Like it was a very drastic change just due to the torque numbers, very noticeable. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a very drastic change from where it's at now, at just a stage one car to basically every single thing you can throw at this car. Say again. So we gotta get all the under shields and trays out of the way before we really do anything because we won't be able to access anything with the way that they've wrapped these cars up. Um, so we're gonna get the fender wells out and then all of the under trays and then we'll actually be able to begin ripping into the car to get these parts installed. So, this lovely red stuff here is called iron oxide, rust. And on these axle bolts, it can be a problem. Oftentimes, no matter how hard you try, they won't come out. But keep trying. So why are we, we taking the axle We need to off? get the axle loose from the spindle because we're gonna do this uh, as quickly and simply as possible. So we'll take the knuckle down with all the arms, replace all the arms and ball joints, and then put it all back up as one assembly. Oh no, it's too big. Do you need help? And that's how you debone a chicken. To clarify, these ball joints can not only be very difficult to get out of the knuckle, but they can also be very difficult to get back in sometimes. Sometimes they're not, but Considering that we're replacing every arm, top and bottom, it made sense just to take this out. It'll give us full reign to get everything dialed in exactly as we need it, and then it can go back up as one unit. Yeah. 
That came out easier. <laughs> So we're going to be replacing both of these lower control arms. Um, this one, well, they actually both come with new ball joints. Um, we're not going to need to separate this arm from the ball joint itself. We just need to take the ball joint out of the knuckle, and the new one will go in there, and then we'll install the new arm on it. Um, this one will get popped out, and then the new one will just bolt right in. Just like that. There it goes. Now you can use a ball joint removal tool and they work great. However, a lot of times I avoid it because I don't want to damage the boot on the ball joint. It's negligible at this point because we're not reusing the ball joint, but my old trusty 12 pound hammer does the job. It's our new ball joint that slips right in there. And then take our spreader off. And she'll be stuck. I feel like also you cut yourself. Design to link everything together, and we've got a hind joint on one end and a rubber bushing on the other, rather than two rubber bushing or a rubber bushing in a, a standard ball joint. Now, these hind joints use this pair of studs that go into the nook. Now, your holes may be okay just to slide them in. Um, However, if you do need to use a stress spreader or something there, that's okay too. But these should go right in here, just like that. Perfect. And then you'll have one bolt that goes through. It should be a 16 millimeter with a nut on the end. And that will lock everything down and then we'll pop the links on top. So now we can get our bolt in here and it should go in without much trouble like that and you'll put your nut on the end and then lock it down and at this point with the bolt in there it is a locking bolt so these can't come out even just with the bolt in there but we'll lock it down further and get it fully tightened so you'll see here we have left front and that is the up direction so it will sit like this And this is the left rear, and this is up. Now you'll want to get these to the same length to start as your OEM links. And then, as you need to make adjustments for your alignment, you can do so accordingly. At this point in time, we are ready to get the engine mounts swapped over to the stiff boys. To do that, we've got the engine supported and we're gonna pop these brackets down, get the mounts swapped out, put everything back together, and it's time to jam this front end back together. Cool. Back together, back together. Suspension. Back, back, back together. It's all pieced together and ready to go up, so. Together, a lot together. Making good progress. Together. Together. But we're near. Oh. Oh. You didn't need that very much. We are nearing oh. the end of the day, so. Uh -oh. uh. What? Well, it's 
not coming. It goes one way, then it goes the other way, and then it stops either way. Uh, I really hope this fucking thing doesn't break. Okay, uh, where's my breaker bar? The day's almost over though, so we'll see as f how far we can get today and then continue tomorrow. My ultimate goal is to get these mounts installed and that should put us around closing time. And we can... If this comes out nicely. Yeah. Just find out soon. Oh no. Dear God almighty. Oh boy. Um, Within a matter of time, Ryan will have some solution worked out with his ratchet straps and figured out even if ratchet straps are not able to be used in the application. I'm just telling Anthony, uh, you can always tell when things are going good when Coleman does one of these <laughs> at the camera. That is true. And I've seen like two of them. <laughs> ground cable and some stuff to fix here. We'll get that bracket popped off shortly, but in the meantime, we'll continue with breaking these loose because I am feeling that will be the most challenging part of this endeavor. Easier, simple, but it's gonna be worth it. Here we have the factory mount, and you'll see there's a lot of space in between here that allows for movement. Um, additionally, it looks like we've already got kind of a terraforming here, which isn't ideal, but you'll see that this looks very similar to the one that we're putting in, but the rubber is much stiffer and encapsulates a lot of these voids. Take a look here. We can see that there's much more rubber and a lot of the voids that would not be filled previously are now filled and will prevent vibration and movement. So when we floor it, the engine won't shift nearly as much with these bad boys in there. Sick. Mount. Yeah. put it up onto the chassis. We're gonna put it up onto the engine. And by doing so, as the engine's sitting lower than it should be just by a little bit right now, it'll allow us to get everything mounted up and then lift it into place. sway bar here is going to come up into this direction and it will sit in this crevice here. Now you'll notice that the bushings have their nipples facing down 
and we will put the Zerk nipples forward facing for easy lubrication. These little nuts go on here. There we go. So with this installed loosely, we can get it centered as best as possible. Just to make sure that it's in a good spot. We'll snug up our bolts and then grease it and then torque it down. Conveniently enough, look what I have here. Ah. Grease gun, baby. Now, you wanna fill this so you can see some coming out. You don't want a bunch coming out, but you wanna be sure that you have filled it. So, as you can see on the top side here, we've got some leakage. I'll wipe all this off, but on the inside, we also have a little bit protruding through. So we have successfully greased that bushing entirely. All right, so we've got our mounts in, our sway bar in, and we'll be able to get the front end finished up tomorrow and move on to the back. So everything's going swimmingly. And really, I'd like to, I mean, attribute how flawlessly a lot of this goes to the product because typically when we're working with these things from 034, they just go in and you don't have to fight them too much. They've done their fair share of work to make sure that when you put this thing together, you're not gonna deal with any more of a challenge than Audi makes it, so, <laughs> which can be a challenge. But I think that uh, once we get everything in here, it's gonna be, way better and we're excited to tell you how it is. One thing that uh, we haven't really addressed yet today and that we will do tomorrow before we get all of the knuckles in is swap these springs out. But otherwise, front end's getting close to being done guys and really we should be done with the mounts and the suspension in its entirety tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow for more. All right, so day two and we are about to start with springs. Everything's still on the floor that we did yesterday for the most part. Sway bar is in and yeah, so hopefully we'll be done with all the suspension chassis stuff today. Um, maybe start on brakes and see where we end up. We're gonna pull the struts and take out the OEM strut brace. We put a real one in, but First, we gotta get the struts down. We'll get the spring swapped over and put everything back together. These electronic ding-dongs, they've got a, this sleeve pulls up and they should just pop off. They can be a little finicky sometimes though. All right, so we've got the struts loosened. They're held in by one loose bolt now. These guys out. We won't need them where we're going. That could be great little. This is gonna get repurposed for something someday. That's for sure. These are just slightly nicer. <laughs> Solid billet aluminum. Yeah. Those are just hollow, like sheet metal, but basically. I don't think. So these should mount up to the same locations, but then this center piece will mount here. Yeah, to and bridge the two. That shit turn around, did he? Yeah, these are pretty sweet. Drop that one on my foot. Whew. Now, if you're familiar with the MQB platform, unless you're dealing with something like one of the wagons or some of the other models, you'll know you don't need a spring compressor because the spring's not under tension when it's unloaded. However, these, I do anticipate, are gonna be under a great deal of tension. So we're gonna get it popped in the vise, compress the spring, and safely separate these. And we have a free spring. 
So now these are a little funny because of the electrical connection. So just take your time, be careful when you're separating these. Use a 21 millimeter socket Preferably with a hex flat on it. If you don't have one, grab a pair of ice grips or something, grab the outside of it. And then inside is gonna be an M10 triple square. You wanna hold on to that and spin the nut free from it. You do not want the shaft spinning, especially on these electronically dampened struts. What do I can do? No. What a guy. Then we need to make sure that this hat, well, it's probably a good idea to make sure of that before you put the nut on. Quick. Now, this is how I would recommend getting these tightened so you don't spin your shaft. Um, Due to the lack of tools that I want to have here, I've popped out my insert from my M10 triple square, which just so happens to be a 10 millimeter size. So it fits right inside of my quarter inch 10 millimeter. That can go onto the actual strut shaft. We'll put our 21 over it. And then through that, our quarter inch ratchet will fit. Now throwing a set of vice grips onto here, will allow you to secure the nut and without it spinning violently you can tighten the shaft into the nut and then finally once everything is snug and secure you can get it to the final spec. <coughs> So how are we feeling? What, what do you mean? About this. About this? How was, uh, the, how was the reinstallation? It's challenging, but it's okay. Um, I mean, it, it's expected to be a challenge with just the way that the suspension is set up and the geometry behind it all. Um, however, everything's in and looks the way that it should. Our upper links are in there and look great. The lower arms are positioned properly. We've got our sway bar set and the link adjusted down to try to keep it up away from my arm here. Um, and then we'll do the same on the other side when it goes back together. But this side is mostly complete with the exception of getting the brakes back on and hooking up our electrical and tie rod. But this will be last because we've got to be able to move the rack back and forth to get that bolt in and out. Um, but yeah, good progress and we're gonna pick up onto the other side and get it done. All right, we've got the front suspension mounts all wrapped up. Got to get the brakes on and put the trim back together. We're onto the rear and we're gonna get all that finished up. We've got quite a project ahead of us um, between needing to drop the diff out of the way to get the, the mounts put in there and deal with the subframe mounts. But all in all, we're on the home stretch now and the hard part is over with.
Very nice, very nice. We're gonna be doing a multitude of things to address a number of the procedural steps we'll need to take. We have a insert here, a mount there, um, and then we've got this brace that will get replaced eventually. Moving back, we've got three inserts for the differential and four for the rear subframe. So first order of business, be able to access all the suspension components and bushings that we need to access. We've got to get the cat back down. We'll hang the mid pipes down away from this. We'll support the transmission, take the bracket down, put all the good stuff in, put that back up, and then continue moving backwards. Well, forwards, but backwards, forward. Yeah. Whoa! Don't be too alarmed when it does this. This is, this is the mount that we're going to be replacing. All right. All right, so we've got our sandwich here. This is where the new mount will go. And here, where this bracket was previously, we now have this insert that will fill the voids. I love these inserts, they always just go in like butter. So that void that was previously in there that would allow this rubber to move and flex is no longer there. So any movement will be absorbed by this spacer and being that you still have your OEM bushing there, it keeps it nice and it's not too intense. There will be a noticeable difference, but in the best of ways. Trans mount and trans mount insert have been installed and we're ready to get moving back again. So, I've got access to both of these, and this. Now this one is interesting, but we'll see what we got going on here. Now, this one goes on the front bushing, and it goes into our diff, like this. It should wiggle itself right in place. Just like that. Beautiful. All right, so our first one will go here. And should wiggle right in and then be in place. And just note that the diff will sit inside of that. So 
So when you get it up, rock it in. To get these subframe uh, inserts installed, first you'll have to get this cap off. There are two tabs that hold it in. You can pry it off. It can be a little challenging, especially since you're dealing with the rubber bushing. So what I opted to do was break off the tabs, pry this out, and then get the tabs out independently. Once you get that off, you've got this pseudo insert in there. It'll come out and then we'll put this guy right uh, here. Beautiful. All right, so what I try to do here is get this separated just like that. And now we've got this insert. They'll come out. Sorry. And we'll be putting the beefy boy in. Little dielectric grease or some synthetic grease is a lifesaver when you are installing this stuff. So put a little <laughs> amount on. It doesn't have to be caked on there or anything, but you want it to be able to slide around that rubber. If not, it can be a challenge. Super, super smooth. Subframe inserts done. Diff inserts done. Now we're onto the springs and finally the sway bar.